So I got three yesterday, no, four yesterday, two today, no, I'm sorry, four yesterday, three today. So now I'm thinking, oh, it happened enough already. It's not going to happen again now. Is that good thinking or bad thinking? What? What? Bad thinking. Why? No, no, no. That's not the reason. It's good thinking. No, it's bad thinking. Because we say, how about if I ask you this? Suppose I toss a coin, what we call a fair coin, and I toss it a hundred times. And suppose I got heads on every single toss, but it's a fair coin. Is that impossible to get heads a hundred times in a row? No, not impossible. Is it likely? No, it's super, 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 super unlikely, right? But it's possible, even for what we call a fair coin. Right? Now suppose I ask you, I'm going to toss it again, what are the chances of getting heads? So some people might say, oh, well, you already got the head so many times before, it's not going to happen again. Right? But that's poor thinking. Because we say the head, that coin has no memory. It doesn't remember what happened in the last hundred times, right? So we say each toss is independent of every other toss, right? But, so in that sense, it's wrong thinking for me to say, oh, well, it happened, you know, four yesterday, three today, so chances are it's not going to happen again. Because this room is independent, I think, basically, of the other rooms, right? So it shouldn't affect it at all. So, okay, all right, we have a hundred yen bet here. So let's see what happens. Now it could be that nothing, I get, we get no matches. <coughs> okay, so I'll start with me. Okay, so just give me the month and the day. Just the number for the month and the number for the day. So this person who's sleeping, <laughs> what's your birthday? Okay, so two, thirteen, good. Next person? One, five. One, five. Next person? Seven, twenty-one. Seven, twenty-one. Next person? Uh, three, twelve. What? Twelve, March. No, say it the other way. Three, twelve. twelve. Next person? Okay, you can do it, yeah. Uh, five, five. Five, five. Okay. Next person? Here. 513. Next person? 31. Next person? 12. 12. <coughs> Next person? 531. Next person? 15. Next person? 72. <laughs> Next person? What? 11-3. Huh? 11-3. Next person? 5-12. Next person? 4-1. What? 4-1. 4-1. Next person? 11-12. 11-12. Next person? 6-23. Next person? 1-22. Next person? 22. Next person? 723. Next person? 4 5. Next person? 212. What? 212. Next person? 526. Next person? 427. What? 427. 427. Next person? What? 436. <laughs> 423. 423. 423. Four, four, okay. Any matches? No. Okay. Let's go. Right? Ah, you see, I, I got a hundred yen already. <laughs> I don't need to. I already got a hundred yen. I have no 
there may be more people. There's no percentage of me going further. <laughs> okay, so how many? Uh, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty-four. Out of twenty-four, actually that's right. Out of twenty-four we got one match. It turns out that the odds are if you have more than if you have twenty-three people or more, chances are fifty percent. No, I'm sorry. If you have 23 people, the chances are greater than 50%. So we had 24 people, so chances are were greater than 50% that we get one match and get at least one match. No, get one. I forget. One match. Okay. How about if we just keep going? Just okay. Who's next? Seven one. Seven one. Seventeen. Twenty one. What? 717. 717. Next person? 11-8. Next person? 8-6. 8 what? 6. 6. Next person? 11-19. Next person? What? Nobody? Next person? Uh, one, oh, wait, who was it? We missed one. Didn't somebody say eight something? No. Okay. Okay. Who's next? One twelve. One twelve. Next person. Nine six. Nine six. Next person. Nine twenty six. Nine twenty. Next. Four sixteen. Four sixteen. Eight twenty seven. Next. Nine eighteen. Nine eighteen. Next. So I want to look at the limit of this function, so it would be useful to graph it first. Okay? So we want to do this problem. We want to do this problem here, so it would be useful to graph this function first before we try and do the problem. So let's, let's uh, graph it. Okay, does everybody see what it is? I'm going to turn the lights on. Okay, everyone see what it is? Absolute value of x over x. I want you to graph it. And when I say graph it, I'll give you a hint. 
And that is, use some positive values and some negative values for x. Okay? Can I, can I take this off? Everybody see what it is? Absolute value of x over x, okay? I'm going to here, I'm going to go to Excel. So, you know, this course is sort of supposed to include some stuff with Excel. But, actually, we'll start that next year, but we're sort of supposed to include Excel. But I'm not really doing that. But uh, I'll just show you a few little things in Excel right now, for fun, just for fun. Okay, so anyway, make the graph of the function. Okay, is everybody ready? Okay, now I'm going to randomly call on somebody. So how am I going to get? I need a random number. How can I get a random number in Excel? Anybody know how to do it? So in Excel, whenever you want to use like what they call a formula, you have to start with an equal sign. Okay, so I have to start at least with an equal sign. Okay? And then, to get a random number in Excel, if you want a random number between 0 and 1 in Excel, you just type R-A-N-D, and that's enough. And then every uh, function in Excel has to be end with a parentheses, open and close parentheses. So I have to end it with that and that. Okay, and that will give me a random number when I hit enter between 0 and 1. So let's see if that works. Okay? And if I copy it down, I'll get other random numbers between 0 and 1. Okay? Alright. But that doesn't really help me select a student here. Because I think there's about, how many students? Let's say there are 30 students here. <clears throat> so, um, I don't want a number between 0 and 1. That's not really good. So I, to get a number between 0 and 10, I could just take this and multiply it by 10. Right? So if I do this, again, you have to start it with equals. But if I take 10 times that random number generator, R, A, N, D, open, close. Now what? I'm going to get a number. The smallest number with R, A, N, D is what? 0. So that would give me 10 times 0, which would be 0. And the largest number with R in the is what? 1. So that would give me 10 times 1. That would give me 10. So this is going to give me a number between 0 and 10, right? Okay? So let's see. Does that work? Yeah. Okay, that worked. And then if I copy it down, it's just going to copy the same thing. So I get a bunch of numbers between 0 and 10. But I don't, that's not really going to help me either because, again, I had 30 students. So I don't really want a number between 0 and 10. I want what? <coughs> a number between 0 and 30 would be more useful. To get a number between 0 and 10, I multiply this by 10, because the largest this part could give me is what? 1. So if I multiply it by 30, then the largest I'll get is 30, right? So let's do that. So let's say equals 30 times R, A, N, D, like that, right? And now I should get a number between 0 and 30. Okay, that's getting better. <coughs> right, I'm going to go like 1, 2, 3, 4, so I'm going to get one of the students. But this is a little bit weird, right? I don't really want those, the decimal points there, right? So, what do we want to, typically we say we want to round the number off, right? So Excel has a round function. So I just need to put whatever I had in here inside the round function. Okay? So again, I can do the same kind of thing. I go equals, and then the round function, R-O-U-N, like that, round. And then I have the brackets, and I want to round whatever I had before. Right? So I want to round R, no, sorry, 30 times R, A, N, D, R, A, N, D, but I need the brackets again, open, close brackets, like that, okay, but actually this is going to give me an error, 
because the round function takes two arguments. It takes the thing you want to round and the number of decimal digits you want. Okay, I don't want any decimal digits, so I want zero decimal digits. So I have to put comma zero. Comma zero, and then close it like that. Okay? And now, this is going to tell me which student to choose. This is going to tell me the student that's going to have to put the graph on the board. And I'm going to count like this, and then like that, and then like that, and so on. Okay? Okay, ready? Here we go. 26. Okay. Maybe I hope there's 26 students. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 
So the right hand side, you would guess, 